But will you tell your kids that you voted for a felon and a criminal, supported a man found guilty by a citizen jury, went into the voting booth happy to pull the lever for the only former president in history to bear the mark of criminal shame? Will you tell them that breaking the law is how they should live their lives? That lying to their families about porn stars and hush money is how they should behave? Do you want your son to treat women like a man who was found to have committed sexual assault? Do you want your daughter to be a victim of a man like him? You're going up the escalator? I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the... Will you tell them that he was honest? That he was a good man? Very fine people on both sides. That he treated people the way you've taught them? I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Will you tell them you're proud of his cruelty? Happy with the ugly insults? I mean, I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. The attacks on women and the endless lies that the chaos, death, and danger he brought was worth it. We know it's hard to walk away and put country over party, but your kids are watching. You're not just voting for your future, you're voting for theirs. Well, 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 take a look at this pictures here. You know who that is? That's J.D. Vance. Some of you may have not seen that, but this is some photos from him back in college wearing a dress, dressed in drag. And guess who hates drag more than anybody? Is one of the internet pastors that we're getting ready to talk about, Marcus Rogers. I had to break the video down into two. I have already recorded a video, full length video on both of them together, but I didn't like it and things. So I'm redoing this thing because this more things have come to mind. I'm just going to separate the two because Marcus Rogers, he's literally has lost his mind just like Mr. Trump has. He has really has become more darkened and his mind has become more seared as the months has passed by that he's made a video recently where he's talking about he's got a couple of people that are connected to Trump and that the debate with Kamala is going to be a trap. And we basically, we've got to win this election. We've got to fix things in society through Trump. And this message has got to get to him because he's got to listen to me. And, and, and I'm going to tell him some things and give him some advice, even though he doesn't take any advice from his advisors or nobody. And all of a sudden, he's going to listen to some old preacher that's in Chicago that's trying to be famous. Well, listen to Marcus right here, and we're going to continue to talk. What's going on, everybody? So as you guys log on to this live, I am going to just give a quick introduction uh, I want you to know that I will be sending uh, what God has given me to a couple of people that I know are connected to Trump. And, um, you know, there's a couple of people that, you know, he takes counsel. Uh, he has them around that I have access to. And I'm going to send this to them and they can do what they want with it. Um, I just believe that, you know, we are living in some critical times, as many of you guys know, and this word has been staring in my spirit for quite some time. And I was up uh, early around 1 a.m. this morning, and I just began to pray about some things that I was feeling in my spirit. And as you see there, he's all, I mean, this guy has lost his mind because not only that, he put on, uh, showed a clip of Dr. Umar. This guy is, uh, I mean, I can't even believe, I mean, this guy, I, he doesn't represent the majority of the black community. This guy, he thinks he speaks for a lot of us in certain ways. Some points is, you know, everybody can have a point here or there or whatever, but this guy is like really pro, pro black and is a scam artist as well. As far as with us, you know, it's a whole nother deal with him and his school that has never came about and all of that. And Marcus, you know, they're talking about this bloodbath or whatever is going to happen in Chicago and things, as you see here in the thumbnail and based on some dreams and all of these things. Once again, people are being this, you know, misled by false dreams and visions and things. And, and, and Marcus is showing as you see here, 1968, uh, uh, and as you can see here, as you watch They're the They're getting clip. ready to come down here and have a convention. In 1968, there was a Democratic National Convention. What was that? Maybe about 
55 years ago or so. My math is kind of bad, but it had a lot to do with, I believe, uh, around the time the stuff with MLK, uh, Vietnam War. And as you can see here in this little clip inside, it got pretty, um, it, it got pretty violent, you know? And so I'm feeling like this can, this can happen again because of the things that I'm feeling in the spirit, the things that I'm saying. I'm planning on being down there. I'm not sure if I'm going to, you know, street preach or if I'm going to, uh, you know, just go down there, engage in conversation with people or just go down there, walk the streets and pray. But we definitely want to, you know, represent as the kingdom and just be led by the Holy Spirit. So be praying for us. And and you see that right there. He's talking about the 1968 and this or that. You know what? He ought to, you know, he's pathetic because Night in the 1960s were some horrible, the 50s and 60s were some horrible times in America. And let's just go to the 60s where you had John F. Kennedy um, assassinated, his brother Bobby assassinated, you had Martin Luther King assassinated, and, and you had civil rights leaders assassinated, the civil rights workers assassinated. I mean, this murder and murder, I mean, total chaos. You had Vietnam War. I mean, you so Vietnam War. And I mean, there's so much. And some of you, my subscribers, some of you might be listening to this lived during that time frame and know how chaotic and crazy it was. So for Marcus or anybody else to try to compare the current state of America right now to that time frame, you need to go back and take some history classes and set your butt down and stop pushing fear. Because, you know, the scripture, I was thinking about that. We talked about this scripture before where it says the wicked flee when nobody's pursuing them. You never notice these folks, they're always looking over their shoulders. They're always scared. They're always pushing propaganda and fear because they're not living right. Their hearts aren't right. So he he's like, God, and he buys into these lies and he listens to a whole lot of conspiracy. He, you know, this is a folk. You followers of him, you can try to attack me all you want and things like that. But, you know, you need to really do your research because Marcus Rogers is, un I mean, he is into the darkness of conspiracy theories and he hangs around the people that are involved in that. Look at this thumbnail right here. This is an event he was at. He was out at that event is that crazy doctor that I've talked about her where she believes that they're clones and, and people have been cloned, Bill Gates and, and all of that. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the Two clip. seats in the world. The other seat is not human. And until we start realizing that we're dealing with creatures that are not human, you keep thinking people like Pelosi and Biden are human. I don't know where their human selves are, but the Bible says the devil would deceive the people of the world to create these images. So how does this deception take place? Be quiet, be quiet. Have, wait, you, you have time to shut. Just give me a few minutes. What's happening to this seed? Listen, the devil will deceive them to that if you die, you're going to live forever. We will clone you, download your brain to the internet of things, and then we're going to upload your brain back into that clone and you'll live forever. It's a deception. Because you see, Bill Gates has been deceived. Even the elites of the world that were human beings have been deceived. Because if Bill Gates was going to die in 20 years, why is he trying to kill us? Why is he trying to preserve the world if he's living in 20 years? They have deceived him. That when he will live forever, that when he dies, they will clone him, but he will die, or maybe he has already, and he would go to hell. They will clone him, all right. But what is going to live in those clones will be demonic spirits, and that is why their agenda is so evil. Okay, so that, that's the one lady that was on the platform with him, and then... Here, we just recently, my previous video talking about the uh, uh, false teachers uh, or so, or MAGA preachers are weird. Well, phony Dr. Manuel Johnson, you, you see, he's on the platform and we just talked about him. So, and, and so let's look at this clip where he's elevating Trump and got Donna Rigney as, as far as well, because we talked about her. She's on this platform. So let's look. We had to go to Rush Mountain. And I do show a picture there because it has something to do with our president, Donald Trump. Saints, I'm telling you, his face may not be carved there in stone, but it is carved there in the spirit. Mm, wow. 
It is carved there in the spirit. Glory days, not gloomy days. That's right. That's right. We're and coming we're into them. them. We're coming into them. And you see, these are people that he associates himself with. And that, let alone, doesn't get to Greg Locke, the hate preacher. And I'm not going to even put any of Greg Locke's hate stuff up. Because every time you put it up, YouTube would try to uh, shadow ban you in some kind of way. But many of you know who hate preacher Greg Locke. He's been kicked off of every platform and everything. The chairs that Marcus Rogers have within his church come from Greg Locke and stuff. So Marcus is, uh, I, you know, I was looking at the script, thinking of scripture. And by the way, I've got, these are some of the notes on the video that is unreleased. But this is, look at this. This is my notes for these two guys that just come to mind with, you know, I wrote down some scriptures. I wrote down some various things because Marcus, the point I'm trying to make, he's a spiritual deadbeat dad. He's a spiritual deadbeat because his kids, he's got seven, eight kids. And he sat there, and I was just thinking, there's a guy that I know, I talked about this recently, somebody I know very, very well that's in hospice right now. He's dying. He's got liver and pancreatic cancer, and he's mid-50s, dying. He sat there, he had two kids, a boy and a girl, when I first met him years ago, back in the early 90s, that he, him and his girlfriend didn't work out. He meets somebody else, he got married, and... He ends up getting uh, to this holy rolling girl that's super, super religious, but she kind of like, she marries him. But then at the same time, he wanted nothing to do with his other two kids. And he goes about his life, has a couple of daughters with this new super holy wife. She acts like neither one of them want anything to do with his parents because they were poor and things. And, and she's ashamed. Both of them were ashamed of his, of his own, his parents. And he married a woman like this. And then she allowed him, to, she gets with somebody that he doesn't even want anything to do with his own kids. So what kind of woman would marry somebody like that? So now here it is, he's dying and things like that. And guess what? He still don't want anything to do with his dad. His mother has passed away a couple of years ago. And here's the break, breaking point. He's got a son that took his own life two years ago because he could not understand why his dad wanted nothing to do with him. And he took his own life a couple of years ago. And it's a sad ending to a story that, and I look at this and much is blame, most of it is his kids, but at the same time, this wife was right along with it. And that's why I look at it with any of these so-called pastors and and self-appointed prophets and all of that, the wives are just as guilty as these husbands. So Marcus Rogers' wife is just as guilty for sitting there, allowing her kids to sit under somebody that's into conspiracy theories, somebody that has elevated Trump to a godlike figure. And if you see this right here, if you get a chance, I'll put the thumbnail right up here. This guy right here, someone asked him a question, uh, uh, Reverend Ed or so, about why was Christians still support Trump? Like I've been saying, you didn't have to pick him. He should have, first off, never been picked in the begin with. John Kasich should have been picked in 2016. That's who should have been picked. Nice, moderate governor that works with both sides about, along the aisle. Then in 2020, after you knew everything, what he did, try to overthrow the election. Constantly, I mean, he's a, a convicted a sexual assault and, and, and still got sentencing coming up and all of that. And yet evangelicals decided to stick with him. And Marcus has continued to stick with him. He was there on the January the 6th because he's prone to run the evil. Prone to wanting violence because he can't stand. Uh, certain groups of people that much and now he's talking as you see right here they can listen talking about he might go to the uh event there of the because it's, it's going to be chaotic it's going to be like uh, a 1968 the convention or whatever i might go down there and preach or this or that listen listen They're getting to ready to come down here and have a convention in 1968 there was a democratic National Convention, what was that, maybe about 55 years ago or so? My math is kind of bad, 
but it had a lot to do with, I believe, uh, around the time the stuff with MLK, uh, Vietnam War. And as you can see here in this little clip inside, it got pretty, um, it, it got pretty violent, you know? And so I'm feeling like this can, this can happen again because of the things that I'm feeling in the spirit, the things that I'm saying. I'm planning on being down there. I'm not sure if I'm going to, you know, street preach or if I'm going to, uh, you know, just go down there, engage in conversation with people or just go down there, walk the streets and pray. But we definitely want to, you know, represent as the kingdom and just be led by the Holy Spirit. So be praying for us. And, and he's going to go down there with his little self-righteous self. You know, if I wasn't saved, if I wasn't saved and, and I come across someone like him, this self-righteousness and, and all of this and this bashing of other people all the time and things like that. And see, he called himself trying to witness to me or something. I'd be like, man, get out of my face or so. You know, and if I was in a really bad mood, he might get a two-piece. <laughs> so, you know, back in the day, long before being saved. So he, you know, why is he so quick to swift to run the evil? But, you know, as I have on here, you know, it's like, you know, we always talk about our, we know the young kids are out here acting a fool and things like that. And they're out here just acting a fool anymore. And, and, and I was thinking like, well, you know, some of them are fatherless homes. Some of them are just, you know, kids that are just, uh, that you, you, you can't have any control of. I don't know what happened with Marcus with the kid that he supposedly spanked and ended up going to jail with. I don't know that situation, but how did you get to that point? Anyway, so that's a whole nother uh, issue there. But then you know what? Even though, you know, he's trying to blame society and and, all, and Democrats and everybody else on messing up kids or doing this or that. When at the same time, you've got people, these spiritual deadbeat dads that are planting seeds of the destruction within his own kids because they're watching him. They're watching daddy. My daddy sits there. And he continues, basically, the law doesn't apply to, 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 to the, the, uh, uh, the man that he wants to stand by. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah, I, my sisters, I, if somebody sexually assault my sister or whatever, I guess it doesn't matter to my dad because he stands by somebody that's involved in that. I guess if I want to be corrupted and, and try to overthrow a government or want to release, uh, uh, call them hostages or whatever, the January 6th people that that violence and, and believe in conspiracy theories and all of this deep, dark stuff, then, you know, I, I guess it's okay. So he better pray. You know, I thought of this. He better pray that all his kids turn out okay. You better pray that one of them don't end up being on the opposite end. Uh, he probably have a heart attack and things. You know, we supposed to have on here, you know, I have a co-worker. Yeah, let me put that in. I have a co-worker that's a diehard Republican. Diehard. And we were talking a little while back there. You know, when you're caught in a bubble and, 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 and you don't broaden your, do research and, and broaden yourself, you know, Rupert Murdoch should have never been given American, if anybody should have never been given American citizenship, it's Rupert Murdoch of Fox News. He just, he, he, he's from Australia. He messed, Australia doesn't want him. And he, had, he has come here to the United States and has done more damage than anybody in the media platform in modern times. And this guy should have never been given American citizenship. And that's why he settled for $787 million for spreading false conspiracies during the election in 2020. And he knew that because the, the amount would have been much, much more and might have bankrupt Fox News. She had no clue that that even happened. You know why? Because they didn't really talk about it on Fox News. All of this kind of stuff gets swept under the rug. They don't want you to know. But if you get Marcus is into it, he won't acknowledge none of, this, none of these types of things. People sit there and, um, um, as they say, Trump doesn't care anything about. He thinks that basically, as Reverend Ed was saying, which I agree, and I've kind of said it as well. People are trying to bring about God's kingdom on this earth in some kind of way. They're lazy. I call them lazy Christians because they want somebody to, they don't care. You know what? I don't care if you try to overthrow the government. I, I don't care if you currently have over 70 something election deniers in every one of the swing states to try to 
plot and scheme and steal the election just in case you, you lose on that night that you can cause turmoil. I don't care if that happens because I believe everything you say. I'm going to bow down. He, Marcus word is always talking about bow down, bow down. Well, he's already bowed down. He is bowed down to the God of this world because he's bowed down. He's kissed the ring of Trump and he is looking to him to be the savior of the world. When you should be looking at Jesus, and preaching the gospel in season, out of season, living your life and letting your light shine, taking care of the poor, taking care of the elderly, not going along with people that want to take away lunch programs for people, head start programs for people, raising age on seniors and forcing them to have to go back to work or whatever, whatever. This is not your normal, uh, you know, and I'm not telling you to vote for Democrats or all of this. I, people should have never supported the man in the first place, and he should be allowed to fall on his face. But I believe he's falling on his face anyway, because I believe God's judgment is upon him right now, currently. And this is why you see the total chaos, the total turmoil, and people turning against him, because the Lord has exposed him. He has failed to repent. He's like, he. I mean, he has failed to repent, and you see the Lord, that's, I mean, it, it, the man has gone mad. He's going insane and things. And and that's where, you know, just sit back, watch the Lord work. Sit back because people have focused so much when they should be, the church should be doing certain things and not demonizing people. As I said many times, if you so hateful towards people that are living an alternative lifestyle, man, won't you get a ministry to reach out to these people? So I don't care some executive order that a uh, president sign into place or whatever ain't going to fix nothing because if people's hearts are not fixed. You can talk about abortion. It, you can put a law in place. Guess what? It'll all go underground. All of it. And the cartels, it, that'll be the newest thing. They'll be hot. They'll be selling them birth uh, uh, abortion pills like hotcakes underground. It, that'll be the new. That'll replace the fentanyl. So until people's hearts are changed, you ain't going to see no change. So putting your hope, set it there, compromising your integrity, your morals to continue to stand by a man that should be locked up. And, you know, we don't know what September the 18th, because I, we don't know what happens. There's this judge, these judges with it. You just have to wait and see. But it says, you know, for people like Marcus and anybody else that continues to stand by uh, uh, Mr. Trump in such a way this, where he can't do any wrong or whatever and things like that. You got to go back, do the research on the man. This ain't the first time the man has been in court. This man has been in court most of his adult life over something not where he has, I mean, burnt people over the years over and over again and have, and have had to pay out judgments he, I mean, the guy, I mean, this, this guy is always up to something. So you mean to tell me that somebody 78 years old, that he didn't, all the times he's been in court, every time it is not his fault. I mean, come on, give me a break. And then as we talking about 78, you know how ironic that is. Yeah, he's the oldest guy right now uh, that, that's ever to be run. He's losing his mind. He's gone insane and things like that. He's already of age of life expectancy in the United States. There's a possibility he may he may not make it, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, based on life expectancy, we don't know that. And then Mr. Drag Queen dressed up J.D. Vance. I guess he'd be the one guy with no experience at all. Are you kidding me? Shows the judgment of Mr. Trump. But your evangelicals and people like Marcus Rogers are just so desperate. So desperate that he's willing to sell his soul for, for it all. And always talking about unities and uh, church and want you to jump on board with him. When he's linked up with false prophets and teachers, uh, you know, abound and travels with them, sings with them. As you see here, singing with Michael Flynn and the corrupt former defunct general, all of these people that support nationalism, and he want you to link up with him, don't you link up with this man. Don't you link up with this man. My prayers, and, I, and I, I'll make it verbally known now, my prayers 
because we've seen it. God is on the move. And yeah, uh, he's on the move. He's been shutting down ministries, shutting down churches and things like that. And I pray that anybody that is using his name for any type of game, anybody that is shaming his name and going about doing damage and destroying souls, I pray that he divinely intervenes and shut that ministry down. That's my prayer. And we're going to continue to march on. And as long as I got breath in my body, it's not hate, but it's a tough love. Some of you out there, you need to really, really start doing your own studying and homework. Do not just assume because somebody's popular that he is truth. He's deceived. He's deceived. I'll leave you with this. The Bible clearly warns us that in the last days, people will abandon the faith and uh, follow seducing spirits and things, uh, doctrines of demons, taught by demons. 1 Timothy 4.1. These false teachings come through hypocritical liars whose mind has been captured by Satan's lies. Many of these people are gone. As I, t I always say, they're gone. And we're going to talk about Joy Black in the next one, in the in, 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 uh, next video or two coming up, as he's, he's a spiritual deadbeat as well. Marcus doesn't work a job. He's supposed to act like he's, you know, this full-time pastor. He's got this many, all of these things going on, but it's all in vain because in reality, he thinks that he's doing this great, great, great work for the Lord, but in reality, He's looking foolish and actually working for the enemy because the Lord does not operate with the spirit of such of you have of going down rabbit holes of conspiracies, believing the stuff that these nationalists are pushing and all of this stuff and mistreating others the way that he do, does. So that's all I have for this particular video. Evangelism for God is a channel where we talk about issues the church run away from. Punch Satan right in between the chops. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.